डॉक्टर कैन हाई ब्लड प्रेशर बी रिवर्स्ड दिस क्वेश्चन कम्स अप ऑलमोस्ट एवरी सिंगल डे इन माई क्लिनिक एंड इट यूजली कैरीज थ्री इमोशंस होप कन्फ्यूजन एंड फियर होप दैट मेडिसिन कैन बी स्टॉप्ड वन डे कन्फ्यूजन बिकॉज एवरी वन ऑनलाइन सेज समथिंग डिफरेंट एंड फियर बिकॉज बी पी फील साइलेंट बट येट डेंजरस नाउ इफ यू सर्च ऑनलाइन यू विल यूर कॉन्फिडेंट प्रोमिस वन डायट वन सप्लीमेंट और वन रूट कॉज बट यर्स द अनकम्फर्टेबल ट्रूथ मोस्ट पीपल डोंट टेल यू इफ बी पी वर्क लाइक दैट लाइफ वुड बी वेरी सिंपल बट इट इज इंट ब्लड प्रेशर इज नॉट अ स्विच यू कैन टर्न ऑफ इट्स अ सिस्टम यू स्लोली रिट्रेन This is reversal and that's exactly what we are going to talk about today. Namaste and welcome back to EG Cardio Wise. I am Dr. Amaya Amonkar and today I'll explain clearly and honestly what reversing hypertension actually means, who can truly reverse it, who may only partially reverse it and what actually works in real life and not just on Instagram reels. Stay till the very end and I'll give you my sweats protocol for BP reversal. If you or someone in your family has high BP, this video will change how you think about it. So let's get started. Let's start by clearing up the language because the word reversal is used very loosely and that creates both false hope and unnecessary fear. When people hear reversal, many imagine one of the two extremes. One extreme is doctor once it's reversed I'm cured forever, right? And the other extreme, doctor if it can't be completely reversed, what's the point trying? both ideas are incorrect so let's put this gently and honestly see reversing hypertension does not mean that your bp problem is deleted from your body you can go back to old habits or that you will never need medicines again bp doesn't behave like an infection that comes and goes it behaves more like weight sugar or fitness what reversing hypertension actually means is that your bp stays in a healthy range with fewer medicines or sometimes none as long as the habits that helped remain in place in simple words your body learns a new normal and this is not just theory we actually have data there are large lifestyle based studies that show that roughly 30 to 40% of people with early stage hypertension can maintain normal bp without escalation of medicines when weight daily walking sleep and stress are corrected but here's the important point that many people miss the body has memory your arteries your hormones your nervous system they all remember old habits so bp improvement is conditional let me give you a simple example our housemaid or our kamwali bai there was a time when she used to come at fixed hours there was a clear schedule the house was clean work got done and everything felt peaceful then slowly discipline slipped timings became irregular she started coming late ringing the doorbell during afternoon naps mem sa pehle upar ka kaam karke aati hu Does this sound familiar? See, high blood pressure behaves exactly like this. When your routine is disciplined, regular sleep, walking, meals, BP stays under control. But once discipline slips and bad habits creep in quietly, BP slowly starts rising without making any noise. Now comes the most practical and most sensitive part of this discussion. Because when we talk about reversing BP, the honest truth is this: not everyone's body responds the same way. and that's not failure that's biology people are more likely to reverse or significantly reduce bp when hypertension is early or stage 1 the duration is short uh, that's around less than 5 years bp is closely linked to weight gain stress levels are high and sleep is poor and finally there is no damage to the heart kidneys or brain in these situations bp is often driven by reversible systems your hormones nervous system tone lifestyle rhythms So when these systems are corrected BP responds beautifully and this is where lifestyle changes can be dramatically effective now let's talk about a large group of people the ones who feel often confused or disappointed partial reversal is common here when BP has been present for many years there is a strong family history mild diabetes or insulin resistance is present and the person is middle aged or older your bp is not just about lifestyle anymore there are structural changes in the blood vessels over time they become stiffer and less elastic but and this is very important partial reversal is still success medicines often work better doses come down fluctuations reduce and long term risk drops significantly now some conditions make complete reversal unlikely like chronic kidney disease thickening of the heart muscles a previous stroke or heart attack 
in these cases bp management has become a part of the protective strategy for the body now trying to force complete reversal here is not smart it's unsafe in these situations bp medicines are not the enemy they are the seat belt you don't remove the seat belt just because the road looks smooth right the heart doesn't give any medals for bravery it only rewards protection but even here lifestyle still improves control prevents progression and reduces complication just again not failure just different goals now let me share what i actually see in my clinic seen patients with early hypertension about 1 in 3 early bp patients can reduce medicines around 1 in 5 can stop medicines temporarily under supervision and almost everyone improves bp control so when someone confidently says everyone can stop bp medicines i usually just smile and think they are either very new to practice or very lucky with patient selection see real medicine is messier than social media please remember this the goal is not to win a contest against medicines the goal is stable bp protected organs fewer complications and a longer calmer life if bp improves but medicines are still needed that is success not defeat i always tell my patients bp control is success and bp reversal it's a bonus one important thing to understand is that blood pressure is not random it just doesn't rise because you turned 40 it doesn't rise because destiny decided one morning see every single day your bp responds to your body weight your waist size your sleep duration and timing your physical activity or the lack of it your stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol and salt sensitivity and insulin resistance see bp is listening to your lifestyle 24 hours a day now when these factors are disturbed a very predictable chain reaction starts Let's break it down very simply. When weight increases, sleep reduces, stress rises, blood vessels become less elastic, adrenaline stays switched on and kidney start retaining more sodium and water. And slowly the BP set point shifts upward. Think of it like this. Your body resets what it thinks is normal BP. So a BP that once felt high now feels usual to the body. and that's why hypertension is often silent. High BP is like driving with your foot constantly on the accelerator. it helps you overtake once in a while but if you never lift your foot the engine and brakes suffer here's an important scientific concept you need to understand see early bp is often functional that is driven by nerves and hormones and very responsive to change but over time bp becomes structural your arteries thicken elasticity reduces and resistance increases and that's why early bp responds faster and long standing bp responds slower but it still responds See biology is not cruel it's just logical some people tell me doctor my bp is stubborn i usually reply no your bp is just well trained and the good news is that what is trained can be retrained the same system that learned high bp can learn lower bp not overnight not dramatically but reliably over weeks to months and that's actually a good thing because slow change is stable change let me simplify bp reversal into one easy word sweats if you remember nothing else from this video please remember this sweat stands for sleep weight exercise awareness of salt tension control and smart medicines if these six improve bp almost always improves now let's go through them one by one first is s for sleep see people sleeping less than 6 hours often become non dippers that means bp stays high even at night when your heart should be resting now one of the strongest predictors of heart attack and stroke is nighttime bp and not the clinic bp if your sleep is poor your heart never truly rests and that silent cardiovascular overwork second is w for weight and waist see even 5 to 10% weight loss can reduce systolic bp by 5 to 10 mm of mercury why because abdominal fat is hormonally active it increases insulin resistance increases inflammation and raises sympathetic tone many patients are surprised when i tell them bp often improves before ideal weight is reached and that's because bp doesn't care about the number on the weighing scale it cares about the fat around the waist so don't just worship the weighing scale also respect the waistline third is e for exercise now here's a powerful fact a single 30 to 45 minutes brisk walk can lower systolic blood pressure by 5 to 8 mm of mercury for the next 24 hours now this is called post exercise hypotension but the real magic happens when you walk consistently for weeks 
BP drops by 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury over 6 to 12 weeks. Which means walking is literally a once daily BP tablet manufactured by your own body. The problem, most people forget to take the dose. Other exercises like jogging, running, cycling, swimming and smart weight training also help to lower BP and we have discussed that in detail in our exercises for BP video series. So please watch that. Fourth is A for awareness of salt. See we Indians consume on an average two to three times more salt than recommended. Not from the salt shaker but from biscuits, farsan, bakery foods, pickles and the restaurant meals even the ones that don't taste very salty. Now this is what we call hidden salt. If blood pressure was caused only by the salt you add while cooking, villages without packaged food would have no hypertension. But that doesn't happen. See salt matters but salt is not acting alone. So don't just panic about salt. You don't need to eat completely tasteless food, eliminate salt overnight, fear every grain of namak or run for the Himalayan pink salt or senda namak. The real enemy is processed salt with good marketing and not the home cooked food eaten mindfully. Fifth is T for tension or stress. See stress doesn't directly cause hypertension but it keeps BP switched on. Your nervous system still thinks your boss is a tiger and puts you in the fight or flight mode. Unfortunately the alert mode is always on. No time to eat, breathing, routine. Laughter, nature, these are not luxuries, they are cardiovascular regulators. And finally, S for smart medicines. See, modern BP treatment uses low dose combinations because they work synergistically, cause fewer side effects and protect organs better. Taking one small pill is not failure, it's preventive intelligence. In cardiology, we don't reward bravery, we reward survival. Many patients ask me, doc, what about inflammation? Now, here's the balanced truth. Inflammation does not create BP by itself, but it amplifies artery stiffness and BP reactivity. Now think of it as a microphone. Now stress speaks into it, salt echoes louder and insulin resistance amplifies it. And the solution is beautifully boring. It's the sweats framework that fixes inflammation automatically, boring but saves lives. So can hypertension be reversed? Yes, in many people, partially in most safely only with guidance. So if you are confused, just remember this, check your sweats, sleep, weight, exercise, awareness of salt and tension control and smart medicines. The goal is not to prove you don't need tablets, the goal is to protect your organs and live calmly for decades. Aiming for reversal does not mean being rebellious, it means being responsible. I have created a free 8 page HG Cardio Wise guide to help you apply this step by step. You will find the link in the description box. And with this video we come to the end of our hypertension series on HG Cardio Wise. My hope is that somewhere in this journey, whether it was understanding the BP numbers, salt, sleep, stress, walking or medicines, you have gained clarity, confidence and calm. If these videos have helped you or your family, please watch the entire series in sequence. Share it with someone who needs it and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss what's coming next. I'll see you in the next series of videos where we talk about heart attacks, why they are on the rise in the young and how to prevent them. Goodbye and take care.